Shape of the City. I'm Clover Frederick and I'll be your host. If you've traveled downtown along N Street in the last year, you've definitely noticed some big changes going on. In December, the construction barricades and signs came down and the N Street cycle track opened, becoming the first protected bikeway in the state of Nebraska. So what does that mean for bicyclists as well as drivers and pedestrians? Let's find out. Shane Dostal, a senior engineering specialist for the City of Lincoln, and Ann Ringline, a bicycling commuter, will fill us in on this new improvement. Um, now, thank you both for joining us. Let's start with Shane. Now, describe to us the N Street cycle track and what its purpose is. The N Street cycle track, in uh, another term, is a protected bikeway in downtown Lincoln. Um, the sole purpose probably was to uh, as a connection between the Billy Wolf Trail that goes along Antelope Creek in uh, the east side of the university and connects to the, the uh, um, bike, bike path that's down by Pinnacle Bank Arena. And it also gives um, bicyclists a, like, it, like I say, a protected space to be so they're not next to cars. They, they have their own lane to travel in, essentially. When did the N Street project get started? Originally got started in uh, January of 2013 is when the design process started. A um, couple consulting firms from um, Portland, Oregon and Lincoln, Nebraska were, were hired to uh, look at the design, look at to see where they wanted to put it in downtown. Um, so that process got started then. In December of 13, the design and stuff was done. Um, an original bid package was put out in, 2000, in spring of 2014. Um, and that was a little more than the city expected. So at that time, um, they went back to the drawing board, made some changes, and then in the fall of 2014, we rebid it again, um, and a contractor was selected, and the actual construction process started in March of 2015, and uh, completed, like you said, in December of 2015. Okay, now who were some of the major players, and what were their roles in this project? In the design process was, uh, uh, the company's name is Alta Group from Portland, Oregon, and they were do they did the planning process of the cycle tracks. Um, as soon as they got it to where they thought they wanted the cycle track to be, um, Olson Associates from Lincoln um, did all the design work, all the uh, construction plans for the uh, cycle tracks. Um, some other key players in the in the whole process was uh, urban development. Um, was kind of the city's project coordinator for the whole project and uh, Ernie Castile with uh, Urban Development was the main person to be contacted there. Um, and then you had uh, um, Downtown Lincoln Association uh, did several business kind of meetings with the business partners down there to explain to them what we were going to do, how we were going to go about it, um, to get their buy-in you know, sometimes not so good, sometimes good. Um, so those, that's, they were a very, very key player in that. Um, and then you had, uh, who else? You had uh, um, Miko Henny is a, was a contractor that did the, did the project. Um, so they were the key player in the construction part of it. Um, Great Plains Trail Network um, did several open houses um, not only for downtown businesses, but for the general public to even attend. Um, and they were a key role because they, they raised, I think it was right around $340,000 to uh, assist with the construction of the, of the cycle tracks. So they, they were definitely a key player in that role. Um, without them, the project probably wouldn't have taken off the way it did. Um, and then you have um, PC Sports. Um, they were the I'll call it the project manager um, as far as the day-to-day -day activities on the construction process out there. And then uh, Public Works came in kind of at the end, um, helped out with the inspection of the cycle tracks and uh, getting it up and running. Very good. Now can you walk us through some of the key features that are kind of new to Lincoln? Some of the features, yeah, like you said, that are new to Lincoln um, is uh, there's green paint out there that they essentially looks like a crosswalk for pedestrians, but the green paint symbolizes that it's only intended for the cyclist. So that's one key feature out there. Um, the bicyclists now have their own dedicated traffic signal heads. 
um, that turn red, green, yellow, just like a normal traffic signal, and that's just dedicated for the bicyclists themselves. There's some sensors in the pavement that senses when the bicyclist is present, and um, they will get their green indication. If no one's there, then they will not. Um, some other features out there is a, they're called turn boxes, bicycle turn boxes. So if, if bicyclists are on an end street in this, in this cycle track or protected bikeway, and they want to leave that area, there are specific boxes that they get into to traverse down 14th Street, 11th Street, where we have marked crosswalks, or any of the other side streets. Um, some of the other features out there that are new is uh, we've got some flashing yellow arrows for motorists. Uh, and what that tells motorists that they can do is they can, they can make that left turn or right turn, um, basically yielding to other vehicles there, um, also yielding to pedestrians at that same time. Uh, we put up some no, we put up some signs now that say no right on reds, um, and the major reason we did that is to protect the bicyclists from people turning right on red out there. Um, some other there's now there's some uh, what do you want to call them bicycle symbols um, that are new to Lincoln. Um, it's no longer a, it's not a shadow like we have on other streets. It's an actual indication for bicyclists to be in that lane of of traffic out there. Okay. Now since this is the first of its kind in Nebraska, I'm sure there were some challenges that came up uh, during construction. Why don't you tell us about that? During construction, yeah, it, I mean essentially we're taking a, a roadway that's specifically for motorists and um, we're putting an area in there where bicyclists uh, were to travel, are to travel. Um, some of the challenges, I mean, Lincoln did it in such a way not only to just put curb and gutter and say, you know, okay, here for cyclists, here you go, here's a way, but um, we put in some bioswales, they call them, and some other places where we can plant some plant material, which will, which will even make it more inviting for cyclists to go down there. It'll give them even more protection than just, a <laughs> just concrete. Um, with that came several challenges in a downtown area where... Um, you have storm sewers, you have other utilities and things like that. So those were, you know, some major things. Um, even, even the paint, you know, for, for Lincoln is new. Uh, and there was challenges with that in, you know, the type of material to use, um, what's going to last in Lincoln, you know, because we have all seasons here. We don't just have summer. <laughs> so that's, that's one other thing that, um, and some of the other challenges were just, you know, day to day um, getting, cyclists not to use it before it was completed. I mean, <laughs> once, you, once you see that, you're, that it's done in a certain area, cyclists <laughs> want to use that, you know, just like motorists want to use a roadway. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was a big challenge. And, you know, but then most, most cyclists understood, you know, that, hey, you know, I shouldn't be on here, you know, it's, there's still construction going on. So those were the major challenges. Okay. Um, now, since it opened in December, what have you learned and what adjustments has, have you had to make? Um, there's challenges with both the motorists and with the cyclists. I mean, we've, we're continuing to monitor and there's been challenges with, uh, how much time do you give a cyclist to get across the roadway, you know, and different locations, different timings, things like that. We've, you know, we're, we're continually <coughs> looking at that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be ma major adjustments throughout the whole, you know, probably I would say for the next year, you know, just to see how many people are going to use it, you know, the number of people, and try to get them from one end to the other in a, in a timely manner, so they don't, so they don't feel like they need to run the red lights to get across. You know that they're not getting um, their indication. Um, motorists, motorists have been a, a big challenge. You know, they had three lanes, four lanes to traverse before, and now they only have two lanes. Um, there's even locations like Antelope Valley where. We had people driving in the bike lane, you know, just because it's, it's, it's normal. And th one thing about motorists is that uh, they will, if they see a median, the tendency in the United States and Lincoln is you drive on the right side of that median. Mm -hmm. So once, once they're driving and they're like, okay, I'm supposed to be on the right side of the median, but yet you want me to be on the left side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had some We've had some issues with that. We're, we're doing some remedies to try to fix that so that, that they don't go down there. Um, you know, other things we're learning is just 
the, the whole how motorists and cyclists are going to interact with each other down there, and, and pedestrians too. I mean, I think we've got some areas in the cycle tracks where pedestrians may have a tendency to cross the, cross the cycle tracks when technically they shouldn't be. I mean, they still need to be on their side of the street and not cross. And I know with the medians, it gives you a sense of a refuge area for pedestrians. And um, so those are going to be learning things that uh, everybody's going to have to go through. So, Sure. Now, what advice would you give for another city who might be interested in adding uh, a bike track like this? Um, definitely start out doing your homework. Uh, if there's other cities in the United States that have tried these or have these in, you know, go talk to them. See what, uh, what things they've experienced, good, bad, indifferent, and then uh, definitely get buy-in from the community. You know, not only, you know, in Lincoln we did it downtown, so that's buy-in from the business community. You know, buy-in from, buy-in from cyclists, you know. I think Lincoln and the, the whole group that did it, you know, getting a cycling community like Great Plains Trail Network involved, you know, they're, they can be a great advocate for anything re regarding bicyclists, regarding healthy lifestyles in Lincoln and things like that. So that, and then, um, you know, just, uh, Keep the public informed throughout the whole process so that they know what's going on. Try to, you know, you know, Lincoln's been doing some educational things to get out on the on the internet to to allow people to have a sense of, you know, what they're supposed to do down there. Because if you just if you just go there, put it in, open it up, nobody's gonna be happy with the city, nobody's gonna be happy with, you know, anybody as far as how things are working and so that's a big part of it. So now that it's open, what sort of feedback have you received? Is it being used? Oh yeah, it's being used. I mean, and that's, you know, we opened it in, in December thinking that, you know, we, we knew there was gonna be some adjustments to, to everything, you know, as far as cyclists, timings, you know, motorists, all that stuff. So, you know, by opening it in December, we thought, you know, well, maybe there won't be a lot of use out there. The, the use that there is is, you know, we can start making adjustments, but there has been, <laughs> there's a lot of use out there. I mean, it's a, we have count stations out there that uh, we are counting bicyclists on a daily basis out there. And it is, I'll say, amazingly surprising that there's many bicyclists that are using it. And uh, for the most part, I mean, it's the bicycling community appears to uh, be happy with what they've got out there. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, they think they need a little more green time, which they, which in locations they're going to need. Um, but you know they're not they're not breathing down the city's throat public works saying you know hey this this is terrible you're not you're not accommodating bicyclists like you said you were going to and it's all been positive in that respect great great well let's chat with ann a little bit because you're using the bikeway right absolutely i am every day yep very good so as a bicyclist tell <laughs> us what the n street cycle track has meant to you well just personally it's meant a ton of ton because that's my route downtown every single day downtown and home in street is what i've ridden for 15 years and so it's been nice and in street was nice and it was i could get downtown but i was just saying like today i wouldn't have ridden on in street you know with the way that the roads were and i'd be off to the side and cars i would be i would just be uneasy riding down in street today but when you've got the bike lane it's still there might be some slick spots and there's some snow over in places it's cleared really pretty well but there are some places where cars would you know the main intersections might be a little bit of snow but having that protection i know that there's not a car right beside me and then if i do go to slip you know, if I slip, I can put my foot down and there's nothing beside me, no big, huge vehicle going 35 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour beside me. So protection in the wintertime has been wonderful. Um, and in the summer, it will just be even better. Great, great. Um, so what should other cyclists know if they're going to ride N Street for the first time? I think what I've learned and, um, but I, I do, I, I'm kind of like um, Shane said, I feel like it's a, it's a learning process. And for both the city and the cyclists, it's slow. Because before, when the weather was good and I would be on it, I'd be right with traffic and I could move through the lights just exactly, which is fine. I don't care if it's slow. 
I want to be, I, it is so protected and I am so safe that it doesn't matter. I'm still getting to work and it's maybe a minute or two difference, but it's still, I'm going to get to work every day and get home every day very safely. And that's what's really important. And that's why it was built. So um, the lights, you do kind of have to bust it through some of them, but um, it's okay. <laughs> that's all right. You know, and I sat through a couple and um, I have gone on a red light because I've sat two, through, two, through two, two or three um, red lights that it just wouldn't change. And I'm finally like, okay, I'm going on the next one. So, but I really do. And I, uh, the cyclists I have seen have really, really been respectful of the lights and follow them. And, you know, it's, and I, I think we appreciate it so much that we're, we're definitely going to follow the rules and, you know, not, you know, be protected and not try to get a, a, an edge on, on the cars anywhere. I think it's a, maybe a little bit slow too because I think we're all still, we understand that it's different for cars and that they, you know, just all the things Shane said, they're used to being on the right side of the median. So I'm always a little, I always look, even though I have the light, I always make sure that there isn't somebody that is confused in a car that's going to go or trying to get through or trying to take a left turn. So I think that's a little bit why I'm slow too because I just want to make sure that I, I am doing the right thing and that the cars are all doing the right thing so everybody's happy. Now describe how it's different to ride downtown now before yeah. um, now that it's protected. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Um, before I really was and, and not all cyclists were this way but I really tried to follow you know get in behind cars and be a vehicle get going and try to stay right with traffic and I could on the in street pretty well but I never felt safe. I really never did. And I always thought this is going to be the death of me someday is going to be riding to work or riding home because it just, you know, a lot of times, I mean, going to work and going home, cars are in a hurry. They want to get to work or they want to get home. And so, you know, so are bicyclists, definitely. So I feel like it's kind of made me a lot calmer um, just because I'm, again, protected and I'm safe. And I really feel like it, it's amazing for commuting. I mean, it just is. It's just going to get me to where I need to go. And I'm really hoping that families are going to see that. When the hay market, when the farmer's market opens up in May, I hope that thing is full of families because it is so safe. There is there is not a problem at all. It, it is totally amazing. So that's probably the biggest thing is that it, my heart feels, <laughs> I don't have, I'm not stressed out when I get to work by thinking, oh. And I know cars were upset. You know, I don't, I don't, I just tried to look straight ahead, but I knew when I was in the, the with the cars, they're like, you're not a car, you're in the way. A, a, a couple times people were very pleasant going, oh, nice job, good work for riding your bike. But generally that wasn't the, <laughs> wasn't the, the, the train of thought on most cars. Well, that's a great segue to my next question uh -huh. is there is always some, there seems to have been some tension between bicyclists mm -hmm. and vehicles as well as bicyclists and pedestrians and pedestrians and vehicles. Um, how do you feel this project is going to smooth some of that? Over? Well, I think so. I think when it was being built, it was a little frustrating on the cyclist part because now in street was narrower and we were going down it, so it really was narrow. And for the, the motorists, I had a, a gentleman in my store, an older gentleman, before it was done, and he said, what are they doing to in the street? And I kind of started to talk about it, and he's like, somebody's gonna get killed. And I said, well, it's not gonna be me, because I'm gonna be protected. So if it's a car, I don't know how that's gonna happen, but I know it's not gonna be a bicycle that's getting killed now. So it, it's a little bit of education, and I just kind of have fun with people. and. Um, I know my husband talks a lot about how, you know, his work, he gets a lot of grief about it. And he always says, hey, my wife rides that every day and she's going to come home at night, I know now. So I don't have to worry so much about it. And, you know, and he he's heard enough from me about, you know, the $350,000 from GPTN and all the things that were used. It's not, you know, so much as, you know, the city didn't pay for all of it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a combination. It's a community effort, definitely. So then they get a little bit more pleasant about it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I think the education, I, I think it's, there's still people that I was saying the other night, somebody, a guy cut the corner close and went over the curbs and yelled at me because, you know, I'm a bicyclist in the bike lane that got built and now it's screwing up his car. But, you know, I think there's always going to be a little bit of that. But I, I think, I think in the next year, I think the city is going to see how smooth it's going to go. And when they see so many, once the weather turns nice, it's, it's a shame that it was, did open in December when weather started to get bad and, it will, you know, the commuters are still going to use it, but it's going to, you know, the people coming downtown just for fun, that may be a little bit difficult for them now. They're not probably going to bring the kids out, but when it's spring comes, I think you're going to see a huge, a huge number of people on that and, and really understand why it's there. And I love the name Protected Bike Path 
because when they say tri a cycle track, I'm like, no, that makes it sound, seem fast and it's not fast. Right. It is a protected bike lane, that's what it is. And it's been getting accolades from magazines and publications even before we, it was rated the number four bike lane in the United States before it was even open, which is amazing. I mean, people look to Lincoln, Nebraska to see how things are done, which is good for the whole city. That's great. Okay, yeah. now Shane, just a couple more questions for, for you. Um, Tell us about this dedication event that's going to be held in the spring. It's in the, it's in the early planning stages right now, but it's going to be on April 23rd um, when the city of Lincoln observes Earth Day. And it's gonna be a grand opening, basically celebration of the cycle tracks. And uh, they're still working out the details, whether it's gonna be you know maybe here in the Jane Snyder Trail Center here or on site, um, probably be on site. But uh, that's when the official dedication of it is uh, you know, going to happen, and hopefully that day, there's like Ann said, there will be a whole bunch of bicyclists that'll ride down there and uh, see how see how well it's working for the city. Now, where can the general public go to learn more about it? Whether they're a cyclist or if they're a motorist, where can they go to learn more about how to use this? The city of Lincoln has put um, a, a link out on their website. So, if you go to the city of Lincoln's website and uh, type in. Uh, keyword end street um, it'll take you to we have educational videos on there YouTube videos on how to use the cycle tracks um, we have some more information on there I think now we've got uh, how to use for even for motorists to use the uh, flashing yellow arrows um, and uh, some other things like that so that's where they can go to find out more information All right. well thank you both for coming today and telling us more about this great improvement for the city thank you when we return, we'll learn about some not so fattening Valentine's treats for your loved one. What if you could add five years to your child's life and make your whole family healthier with simple changes? Partnership for Healthy Lincoln wants to help you and your family live longer, healthier lives. It's easier than you think. Take the dog for a walk, play more and text a little less. Swap out a soda for water once a day. Keep fruits and veggies handy for snacking. For more ideas, visit HealthyLincoln.org. Valentine's Day is like a box of chocolates. You really never know what you're going to get. And sometimes the last thing you want is a box of chocolates, especially if you're really trying to work on your health. We've got some other solutions that you can really use that can be a little healthier and maybe incorporate a little chocolate, but yet keep it healthy. I love to do chocolate dipped strawberries this time of year. All I do is I take about a cup of chocolate chips. If you can use dark chocolate, especially around the 60% cacao or the darker semi-sweet chocolate, that can work great. I use a cup of that with just about a half a teaspoon of oil. I put this in the microwave for about a minute to 30 seconds at a time, stirring until it becomes liquid like this. Then you basically just take a strawberry that you've washed and you really dried thoroughly, dip it into the chocolate, and then put it out so that it has a chance to firm up. One trick that I use is I dunk my fruit through a little bit of ginger ale or diet ginger ale because the citric acid helps to keep that fruit from browning. Then I make sure and dry off that fruit real well before I put it into the chocolate so that the chocolate doesn't seize and get hard on me. Think about all the different fun things that you can dip in chocolate. You can really have a lot of your favorites and have it work out. Maybe I've gone too far. Happy Valentine's Day. Shape of the City is dedicated to helping Lincoln stay informed of health and wellness topics and events. Visit our calendar at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword 10health. If you'd like to see your event covered, email us at 10healthlincoln at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Until next time, get active, eat healthy, and stay informed.